how are you doing? Welcome back to some more Football Manager and some more of I am the journeyman and I come from down your way and I can play. What can you play? FM23. And we're not doing very well, very well, very well. And we're not doing very well. What we going to do? Hopefully get through the final of the Carabao Cup. Welcome to uh, The Journeyman. Uh, long time since uh, we've had the the song um, at the start of the episode, so I thought we'd switch it up a little bit. Um, it is absolutely freezing cold right now. The, the, the boiler has gone off at the worst time of the year possible. Um, so I'm sat here. Uh, very, very chilly indeed. But uh, hopefully what will warm the cockles nicely will be... Uh, a victory against Blackpool in the Carabao Cup third round to get us through to the last 16 of that competition. Um, that would be rather brilliant. There's still some pretty small teams in the competition, actually. Uh, so if we do get through, we could potentially uh, get even further into the into the comp, which would be fantastic. Um, we haven't done very well at the start of the season, as I said uh, at the start of the episode. Since you were last with me, we did get a very important victory against Reading. Uh, we had to come from behind in that game. Uh, we were 2-1 behind, but Daniel Batty scored a brilliant goal towards the end of the match uh, to mean that we won that match 3-2 uh, and got ourselves uh, three points on the scoreboard. Uh, we then lost 2-1 to Norwich. Uh, again, you know, it was a close match. Daniel Batty getting the goal, but uh, we were edged out there. Uh, we then beat Accrington Stanley in the Carabao Cup second round. Ty Sodje and uh, Owen Dale on the score sheet there for us. Uh, we then narrowly lost to Hull. Daniel Batty scoring again, but uh, unfortunately uh, we conceded a, a late goal to, to Hull and they uh, took all three points. Similar story in the QPR match. We were ahead in that match um, very early on. But uh, Ricky J. Jones got us back to twos each and then uh, not long after, a minute after, in fact, they scored the third goal and hung on to it ever since. We then lost 3-1 to Blackburn. Again, a late goal, uh, making our day even worse. But uh, we did recover to beat Sheffield United 1-0 at Bramall Lane. I thought that was a really, really good performance. Luke Cundall getting a late winner for us. And uh, that means we're actually outside of the relegation zone for the moment. We were bottom of the league before the Sheffield uh, United match, but we're on six points from seven games. If we can keep that sort of ratio until the end of the season, we're giving ourselves a fighting chance. So, yeah, we, we might have to keep our eye open for other job opportunities throughout the year, but we'll see how today goes. We've got a match against... Uh, Blackpool of course in the cup but then we're playing Salford in the league away from home and that is a relegation six pointer very early in the season. A uh, quick look at squad performances then. Top goal scorer is Owen Dale with four from seven three for Daniel Batty and two for Luke Cundall. Top assists is three for Cundall uh, two for Dale and uh, two for Glatzel as well. Top assists is, uh, sorry, top average rating is Owen Dale with a 7.22 Jake O'Brien's off to a very good start this season as is our new signing Luke Kundal. Uh, right then let's have a little look at the team for today we've been fiddling with defensive midfielders over the last few matches but uh, we are going to go back to our usual style today and, and see how that goes in this match. Uh, we've got Brad Young starting in goal with Sam Curtis, Jake O'Brien, Sean Raggett and Harrison Burrows uh, making a rare start at left back. Uh, Thomason and Batty will start in the middle of the park with Dale Cundall and Glatzel starting behind Harry Cornick up top. Um, Cornick did get a, a, a goal so you know he's off and running this season but um, we'll just have to see really uh, how we get on in this match it's it's tough to say really you know Blackpool are, are in League One of course we should beat them but this season we've just been very very unlucky at you know we've been playing okay in matches we've scored in every match so far this year but I uh, just can't quite get the, the the points I think we we deserve so hopefully when we start winning some matches put a, a run of form together which could start here uh, then we can 
rise up the league. So, and Dale hits the target with that free kick. He is becoming more and more lethal with those shots from range. And uh, Owen Dale nearly getting his fifth goal of the season. And considering he didn't play the first couple of matches, it is showing that he is perhaps our best player and most important player. Uh, he has Grimshaw in goal to Casey. Or I think it was Cissé, actually. He has uh, Taylor. No, no, it is Casey. Virtue. Virtue uh, to, to Casey. All the way back to Grimshaw now. Feels like uh, they're going to make a little mistake here and we're going to pounce on it. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, Casey again. They're, they're passing in this little triangle and now our players are starting to press towards them, putting the pressure on. He has uh, right on the right-hand side. Blackpool have somehow found a way forward. He has Yates. Brilliant ball. And Curtis doesn't uh, deal with it in that side netting from uh, dibbling. Small touch from Brad Young there. And that could easily have been 1-0 to Blackpool. Dibbling gets it in. A header away by Curtis. Curdle now clears. He has Gabriel. End of highlight. Mm, big shame. Right then, here's Thomason. Now gets it to O'Brien, to Barry. No, not Barry. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of Gareth Barry there. He has uh, Curtis on the right-hand side. Let's keep going. Curtis still going on the right-hand side. This is a good run. Curtis into the middle, and Cornick hits the target into the back of the net. And that is exactly what we needed there. Very good start. And it is a 1-0 to the... Uh, the Portsmouth, the Pompey faithful will be delighted with that. And, uh, well, I'm delighted with that too, to say the least. Very good goal from uh, Henry Cornick. <clears throat> and it, it is 1-0. Come on, boys. Come on. Let's let's do this now. So, still 1-0. Uh, let's say I think we're doing well. I think we could do even better, though, let's be honest. Um, let's have a little look at what we could switch up. So Glatzel not having the best of games on that left hand side. Let's put Stuart Dallas on there. Um, no, I think keep it like that for now. Maybe into the second half, we'll we'll give our young striker a few minutes. He hasn't played another match, by the way, since. That match against uh, Peter Brown, was it? I think. Oh, that's terrible. And he has Jerry Yates with the shot, hits the post. We looked at Jerry Yates over the summer, but they wanted five and a half million pounds, and we, we just don't have that money. By the way, uh, the board are being very rude to me at the moment. Every request I put in that they're saying, oh, stop wasting our time, this, that, and the other. Um,. You know, I wanted to sell a player on deadline day. They weren't happy with how much money there was. And yeah, it's it's the relationship with the board isn't brilliant. Um, certainly on a one to one level, they're, they're they're perfectly happy with me as manager. And you know, why wouldn't they be? But um, yeah, they're they're starting to get a little ratty, which we don't appreciate. Um, in this business. Uh, we're going to put Harry Cornick behind the striker. We're going to put uh, James Howells up top because I want to give him a go. I want to give him half an hour to to prove himself in the cups and and show. Well, you know, Joe, why, why don't you why don't you play me in in the league and I'll show you what I can do. Uh, Batty's injured. That's a bit of a problem. Let's put uh, Stuart Dallas in the middle of the park instead, and uh, Cornick can go on the left. And Murdoch can go in behind the strikers. Yeah, lovely, uh, lovely bit of depth, and I think that's that's great. We, you know, we've brought in some very versatile players over the last couple of years, and I think that's really helping. But it is also meaning that it's difficult to know what your best eleven is and what positions that best eleven play in and uh you know that probably contributes to some of the problems this season as he has yates and he makes it one all he equalizes was he on side i think he was and jerry yates has scored and it's now portsmouth one blackpool one oh that is not what we wanted to see was it we did not want to see that net bulging and blackpool being back in it let's encourage them 
I don't think there's extra time at this stage of the Carabao Cup, so I think it will be Penno Jeffs. But uh, Blackpool might win it in normal time here, which would be an absolute disaster for us. Um, he has Dibbling now with a chance. Is Dibbling going to shoot? He does. Oh, just wide. Fizzed wide of the post. Could be the last chance of normal time. That Although there are six added minutes where we play in this in Qatar. And it is Penno Jeffs to finish off. Um, let's uh, hand that over to the assistant. So uh, Cornick's going to take our first penalty. Uh, Stuart Dallas, our third. Luke Kundal. Um, I kind of want Luke Kundal to take the fifth penalty just because of his composure. Um, Sam Curtis can take that one. Yeah, James Howell's the seventh. He's perhaps a little young to be going for that. Um, yeah, okay. Here we go. Now, I usually just say, pick your spot and go for it. Let's see. Oh, we're in front of our own fans. We know this will come. Uh, to show courage of your convictions and leave no regrets. Pump out. Oh, no. Hands together. Here we go. Right. Let's try and get them. Oh, George Tom Thomason is uh, anxious. But here we go. Penalty. Oh, new graphic as well. It's going to be uh, Cornick, our best penalty taker. That steps up first. Harry Cornick steps up. Oof. Lovely penalty into the bottom right corner. Oh, we don't like this, do we? We do not like this. It's Yates stepping up now. Jerry Yates scores. Very good. Can we change the camera angle? Um. yeah that one that'll do oh terrible penalty from Sam Curtis we promoted him to be in second because he was looking calm ahead of the penalty shootout here's uh, Fulton now he's going to step up for Blackpool oh, and it is a Blackpool 1 Pompey 1 at this stage as Stuart Dallas our James Milner type figure steps up and uh, puts in a beautiful penalty into that bottom right corner. And now Wright steps up. Can he score for Blackpool? Oh, Brad Young got a fingertip to that. And now we're into the range of we must score. Here's uh, Josh Murdoch now with a chance. Josh Murdoch steps up and scores. It's Portsmouth 3, Blackpool 3. We've got two more chances to save one of their penalties. It's Virtue stepping up now. He goes in for the run-up. Oh, it was straight down the middle. Brad Young got a touch, but uh, couldn't do anything with it. And it is still 4-3. And if they score their next penalty, then they will win. We've got Luke Curdle stepping up. He's got a bit more composure about him. Can he take this crucial penalty and score it and keep us in the competition? Yes, he can. Top left corner. That's where Harry Kane was going for in the France game, but of course uh, hit the International Space Station. Right. Come on, Brad Young. Let's see if you can save this goal. Dibbling is going to step up. Can Dibbling miss? Please. Or are we going out of the Carabao Cup? We're going out of the Carabao Cup on Penno Jeffs as well. That is not what you want to see. Um, but to be fair, you look at the XG and, and Blackpool with a better team. So, yeah, you know, it wasn't just the penalties that, that were the problem there. Um, we were the problem. And that's what we improve against Salford. But the, the Cup dream's over. Right then, a few changes for this match against Salford. Brad Young will start in goal. Uh, Jordan O'Brien makes his debut. He has been injured at the start of the season. He comes in at right back. Sean Raggett and Latte rekindle that original centre-back pairing. And Logan Pye comes in at uh, left midfield. Thomason and Adshead in the mid middle of the park. Um, and then we have got uh, Reese Russell Denny, Josh Murdoch and Owen Dale supporting Ricky Jade Jones up top. Now Jade Jones has only scored one goal this season. Um I still expect him to be able to to score 15, 20 goals this year. But uh starting the air injured, you know, he he's gonna need a few matches to 
to get match fit again and and I think that's what we're what we're seeing and um he scored in in his last game I, I believe um against Blackburn so hopefully he can get on the score sheet today because uh Corrick is is getting goals so we'll see we'll see right then let's see what we can do in this match against Salford already you know not off to the best of starts but uh Salford uh, the last few years they've been knocking on the door of playoffs to get into the Premier League so I've been very very surprised to see what a poor start to the season they've had we do not want vertical scrolling but uh I have noticed uh, we haven't been doing as well since we've not been using sidelines. So we're going to blame the start of the season on that. And we are going to go back to sideline view and hopefully dominate play that way. Uh, he has Dazelle, Andre Dazelle. Goodness me. I remember signing him for Everton, I think, in the Everton project. He was a, he was a bit of a wonder kid back then. Nothing really came of him, though. But uh, remember signing him in that series, one of the first series in the, on the channel. And well, O'Brien is uh, injured, by the way. Look at that; he's only just come on the uh, uh, making his debut. He's just come back from injury, and we've injured him again. He has uh, Raggett on the ball, gets it to Stuart Dallas at right back. Here's Ad's head, gets it forward. Russell Denny now has a chance to whip it into the middle, and it's Murdoch. That should have been a decisive goal, but it's not. Latte loses out, but he runs all the way back to grab it, and we've got 20 minutes left. I think we are going to have to make some changes here. Let's see what we can do who's not having a good game Ricky J Jones again not playing well we'll give Sodji a chance up there Thomason um, yeah we can swap him with uh, Russell Denny why not uh, and give Poku a chance Poku hasn't really played this season so it'll be nice to, to see him um, other than that we've got Glatzel to potentially come on he could come on for, for Owen Dale we have got a chance here though and it's Russell Denny with a free kick opportunity now I've been told by my scouts this boy could be the new Nathan Lowe of the series so let's see has he got a Nathan Lowe in him Russell steps up Oh, he has! Oh, ho, ho. Reese Russell Denny, the new Nathan Law of this series. What a brilliant free kick that was! Um, just bent it round the wall, and that—that that is fantastic. If we can start scoring from free kicks, that is going to help us immeasurably. Thank you very much, Reese. And uh, now we have got 10 minutes to hold on to a massive victory. It'll be two victories in a row in the, the league. And all of a sudden things are looking a lot more promising. And there's the final whistle. And we have beaten... Salford at uh, one goal to nil away from home. That is a huge victory for us and what a way to win it as well. Um, and we're now three points clear of the relegation zone, moving on up the table. And if we can put a little bit of a run of form together, hopefully we can stave off the threat of relegation. That is definitely the hope. Um, we're certainly the, the best performing out of the three promoted teams so far. So that's something to be positive about. Jordan O'Brien's going to be out for another couple of days, which is a shame. Reese Russell, very good performance from him. Let's just have a look at his free kick taking ability. Apparently uh, 12. It has gone up slightly. Um, but if we have a little look at uh, Nathan Law, what was he? Because he used to just score from everywhere. Um, I don't actually know if he'll still be in the game. Nathan Law, that's him, that's him, isn't it? Hey, 31 years old. Uh, who was he playing for last season? Alfreton. Okay, interesting. I mean, we could uh, bring him in. I know he's not going to help us at all, but uh, free kick taken. How much would he cost to bring in? Let's see, emergency backup. 
Uh, hey, three. Oh, well, we got to bring him in, haven't we? Do you, do you think? I think so. Three seventy-five quid per week. That's uh, that's going to be a, a an okay signing. A little bit of depth into the midfield. We know he's not going to be the best at this level, you know. Um, last time we had him was in the National League, but um, he, you know, if we can bring him on for set pieces, who knows? <laughs> oh, it's going to be a waste of three hundred and seventy-five quid a week. But uh, you know me, I love to do that. Right? When? Oh, well, we will come back. Uh, probably for the Everton and Wigan game. I just seen that Everton game and I thought, wow. Everton in the championship. That's uh, that's going to be an interesting one next time. We've got three home games between now and then. Uh, so that those three games are going to be crucial, you would think, in the outcome of our season. We've won two in a row in the league now. We are scoring goals, as I say, in every match. It's just about getting those points and that accumulation of points through the season. But if you have enjoyed that, give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more fm 23 videos and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye